Good morning and welcome back to the African Alert Outdoors. Um, today we're shooting this video out of Tabazimbi Burg and Hengel. They're a proud sponsor of today's video, so thank you for joining us. And today's discussion is all about uh, which is the best broadhead to produce blood. And the quick and fast answer is not what everyone wants to hear, um, because it's actually got nothing to do with the broadhead and which produces the most blood. It doesn't matter whether you're using a fixed three blader, you're using a rage in the cage, or you're, you, you're using a big single bevel fixed blade. It's all very much dependent on where the shot placement is um, and also what the animal is doing at the time. I think people get too worked up on, um, you know, they want the best blood trail because uh, it's easy to track and to follow. But in all honesty, if you shoot an animal in the right place, then you're going to find it within 80 or 100 yards. So why worry about a blood trail that is going to leave blood for you to follow? Invariably, a blood trail is like a scalp wound on a human. And I don't know if any of you have cut yourself on your face or on your chin, but you tend to find that you bleed profusely. Also, if you take a small average size animal like an impala. An impala needs to lose about a liter of blood before it starts showing effects of blood loss and the effects of blood loss are normally dizziness and then eventually the animal will fall over and uh, it will expire because its blood pressure basically drops. Mm. So, you know, this is a, just a little half liter but you can take two of these bottles, fill it with blood, make a small hole in the top and spray it all over the ground and see how much blood you get and you will think that this thing is going to capsize within that area. And it's actually not true. It's completely not true. What you want so, what is the best broadhead? Well, we all know that the best broadhead is certainly the sharpest broadhead that you can use. And the reason I say that it is the sharpest broadhead you can use, because if you have jagged edges on your wound channel, um, it's easier for the blood to clot there. And if the blood, blood clots, on those blood channels then you're not going to get so much blood leaking out. Um, I think the other thing as well is, is that uh, a person must also be 100% sure of your shot placement. Um, ideally what you want to do is you want to hit just above the heart and the reason I say is if you can picture your heart lies um, pretty much like that and then on top of the heart you have these major arteries coming here. Also if you aim for that spot you know just above the heart if you shoot an inch low, then you're going to be in a heart. If you shoot an inch high, you're still going to be through both lungs. If you shoot a, an inch left, you're going to still be through the, the, the lungs. And if you shoot to the right of that, you're still in a safe zone. You're in that vital zone. So essentially, you give yourself an, about um, a five-inch circle that you can aim for. The other thing with blood trails is if you shoot them in the lungs, and the lungs are expanded, you know, in, in other words, the animal has taken a full breath, um, you'll tend to find that there'll be initially a good blood spray and as the animal runs on so your, your blood will start deteriorating. If the animal's lungs are deflated when the arrow passes through then you're going to find that um, the blood will tend to leak into the cavities. If you shoot places like the liver which is a blood rich organ you're also going to have a great blood trail but then you must remember that you're also going to have a longer follow-up. So there's no really hard and fast rule. So it's imperative that shot placement is your, 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 your first thing. The sharpness of your, uh, of your broadhead is critical. And then, of course, your arrow flight. You know, if your arrow flight is, is perfect, then you're going to get the most amount of potential energy hitting that vital area. I think the other thing as well is, is that uh, many of you that watch my videos know that uh, I'm a big fan of pass-throughs. And the reason that I'm a big fan of a pass-through, and when I say pass-through, I'm talking about a complete pass-through, is that you have two holes, one on either side, and that allows for both air and body fluids to move out freely. If you partially penetrate an animal, and uh, that's normally because it's come into contact with heavy bone, you tend to find that that arrow will still be stuck in the wound channel and uh, you'll tend to find that will actually pretty much clot um, and prevent the blood from coming out. So these are all critical things that we need to take into consideration. So shot placement is important. I think it is very important that um, you learn the vital areas of the animal that you're talking about and you have a very large 
margin of error. Even on a small animal, um, you have a good, you know, four to six inches to hit. And uh, if you're new at the game, certainly keep your yardages down. That by keeping your yardages down, you keep your accuracy a lot more pinpoint. Allows less time for the animal to move in that duration, and also you have the most amount of energy still in your arrow to impact that. You know, we all know that with archery, the further you move away from your bow, the bigger your trajectory and the more energy you tend to start losing. So it doesn't really matter what broadheads you use. I think there's a lot to be said for um, the quality of broadhead steel and the fixed blades uh, offer a better quality. They offer more structural integrity. Um, the other thing that I will also add is, is that a three blader is more likely to bleed better if those of you that are chasing blood trails than what a single blade will or a, or a blade that has four, four blades or a fixed blade and two bleeders will bleed better. It does have an impact on your penetration but uh, you must weigh up what you want. For me, I'm not worried about the blood trail. I want to personally find my animal within 80 to 100 yards of where I shot it. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.